Papua or Hawaii. So the question is, who's the us? Is it only the native Hawaiians? Is it also the Japanese who have been living with us? The Filipinos, the Samoans, the uh, Chinese, and everybody else? Or is it just the native Hawaiians? Any idea? Who is the us? Mm -hmm. If we become an independent nation, so usually the term is self-determination. Determination means you decide what direction you want to go. You want to be independent, you want to stay with the United States, you want a different kind of relationship. That's determination. But the question is not merely determination, the question is self-determination. Who is a self to exercise that determination? Do we have self-determination today? So we're going to address that question. Oftentimes, when you come in out of decolonization, you address the fact that the Americans stole our government. And then we all get very angry at all the Howleys. And we get very angry at all the Japanese, and all the Chinese, and all the immigrants who came into Hawaii. And then we start swearing, I don't know, at Tekeli and all that stuff. Is that appropriate? Who were the people who were citizens of the Hawaiian nation back in 1893, when they stole it from us. So who is the us? Was it only Native Hawaiians? No. It was all kind of people. To be a Hawaiian national, what was the requirement? Um, you have to live here for five years, yeah? Five years? 50% Hawaiian blood. No. Oh. Blood was never a test. Blood was never a test. But you had to make a commitment. You had to switch your allegiance from some other country to Hawaii. Is that unusual? That's what all countries do. To be naturalized as an American citizen, what must you do? You have to live in the country for a number of years, and you need to take an oath of allegiance to that country. Hawaii had the same requirements. But well, what happened after the Americans came in and took over our government? They take the term Hawaiian and they redefine the term. So today, who are the Hawaiians according to American law? Who? I'm sorry? Everyone? No. They say you're going to be of the blood. You have to be able to trace your ancestry back to 1778, before the arrival of James Cook. So the Americans come in and they use a racial definition. Then you heard the term Native Hawaiians and other Hawaiians. Who are the Native Hawaiians? Those of blood. 50% of the blood. The other Hawaiians, less than 50%. So they take the Hawaiian race and they cut them in half. They split us into as if we somehow supposed to be different people. So this is what colonization has done to us. Messed up our mind and then they split us from the rest of the population. My mother is pure Chinese. My father, half Hawaiian, half Haole. But in the family, we don't make the distinction. We still love the Ohana. So we end up playing a racist game as we try to figure out and get out of the confusion brought to us by that colonial government. <laughs> what should the future of Hawaii be? Should we be an independent nation? No. If I, yes or no? No, not well, not in the current condition we're in. Okay. Uh, let's look at 2030, 2035. 
Okay, how many years is, is that from now? 15. About 15 years? Yeah. 15 years from now, what can Hawaii become? What is our preferred future for Hawaii? Sustainable agriculture. One, sustainable ag agriculture. What else? Uh, <laughs> See, that's the kind of thing. Self governance. Self governance. Oh, yeah, they want to be independent from the uh, U.S. government. From the U.S. Entirely. What else? You see, that question belongs to you folks. That is a planning that needs to be done. That is what Hawaii politics is all about. You can study what has happened previously. You can take a look at what is happening today. But the real question is, in the future, what is Hawaii going to become? If you don't start focusing in, start creating that image, then we're all subject to control by the colonizer. What does self-government mean? Mm -hmm. Hmm? What is the government at the present time? Who governs Hawaii? President. At the present time. Okay. The president? No, queen. The queen? Wait, are you talking about right now? Right now, oh, today. Right now. Who government. governs Hawaii? Who? Ige. Ige? And he operates under what? The U.S. The U.S. The U.S., which has created the Hawaii state government. And the Hawaii state government has to follow the United States Constitution. And who's the final decider of what is appropriate and inappropriate for Hawaii? You go up the line of courts, right? So you have the district court, and now is in Kapolei. You have the circuit court in Honolulu. You have the Hawaii Supreme Court and the appellate courts in Honolulu. But if somebody disagrees with the appellate court, where do they go? Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court. And the U.S. Supreme Court decides what? They say essentially, we the boss. And we will apply the United States Constitution over Hawaii. And so, and I've represented many, many, many clients. And my response is, how did that happen? Where did you folks get the right to step in and govern us, govern Hawaii. They say, well, in 1893, there was a transfer of government. 1898, the Republic of Hawaii gave, gave the government to the United States of America. In 1900, we created the Organic Act, the Territory of Hawaii. And then in 1959, we made you folks a state of the United States. All the steps that they're describing are steps of theft. So in 1993, they pass a resolution, a General Assembly resolution. They call it the Apology Resolution, apologizing to the Native Hawaiians. We're sorry that we landed the American troops, we took over your government. What is that? It's a confession. They say, yeah, we were wrong in taking over the government. It was a violation of international law. We had no business doing it. We didn't get the consent of the people. And so we apologize. That's all they do, apologize. Empty words. Did they give back anything? No. no. Absolutely nothing, right? How come? Because, because they're valuable. Yes. Not only because we're valuable, because we think we don't have power to take it back. The thief is never going to sit in judgment of itself and be fair. And they admit that they are thieves. They admit they took it all. 
Well, where's the fairness? So the plan has to be that we should control Hawaii. Not some foreigner to come in, whether they're Americans or Japanese or Chinese or Russians or anyone else. That is what self-determination is. We decide. We decide whether or not we want to relate to the United States or whether or not we want to relate to any other country. And right now, we're not taking a look at those things. Our politicians are not taking a look at those things. How many of you travel outside of Hawaii? to any foreign country? No? no? Let's say you go to the Philippines or you go to Japan. You have to apply for a visa. Okay? You gotta get permission to enter the country. And when you apply for a visa, you gotta pay, let's say $25, sometimes $40, $50, before you can get into country. And then when you leave the country, then they hit you again with what is called an airport departure tax. So you got to pay again to leave the country. <laughs> so you end up just in that transaction, you end up paying up to $100. How many tourists we have in Hawaii on an annual basis? Mm -hmm. About 10 million? Yeah. About 10 million? About 10. Yeah. You multiply a hundred dollars to ten million, because we ain't collecting a cent, right? A hundred million dollars just of the tourists coming in, but we're not collecting that. But they say, "Oh, but the tourists bring in money." Oh yeah, they bring in money, but who receives the money? The government. The government in taxes and big business. How many of us own hotels? How many of us locals own hotels? Not a whole lot. How many of us own travel agencies or all these major things? We are out of the market. Yeah. But when they want workers to fix the bed, to uh, go service the, the kitchen or the restaurants and all that stuff, who they hire? Us. us. So it's like, you know, cockroach? Mm. <laughs> you throw the crumbs out, the cockroach over there and eating it all. And they're very happy because they get crumbs, right? Yeah. And so that's what they're doing. They're tossing the crumbs to us and they're taking all the, the prize things. And then what? They're running away with the money. Costco. We all love Costco, yeah? Cheap prices, can you imagine how many people are shopping at Costco? Okay. Now, why is it that every day at the end of the day, Costco packs up all the money that they made during the day, they take it down to the airport and they fly it out of Hawaii? What happened to store it into our banks, investing in our community? We have absolutely nothing to say about it. Why not? Because this is American capitalism. They can do whatever they like with their money and we got nothing to say about it. See how we are controlled? And we are not thinking about these things. That's why we have to imagine. What does independence mean? What can we control? What should we be controlling? A people should at least be able to control the education of the children. That's very simple, right? As our kids, we should be able to control the education. Who governs the control of education here in Hawaii? How come the Hawaiians cannot speak the language anymore and now they have to recover as if it's a foreign language? Because of the government. <laughs> took over control. And they made us, you know what they call national norms? Oh, yeah. Yeah? We're going to normalize the education to make sure everybody equal. No, they wanted to make all of us holy. They wanted to make all of us Americans. And in doing that, they took away our language, our identity, our history. And they made us 
essentially slaves of our minds. And unless we start thinking about the future, unless we start thinking about how we are going to control our education system, we did. Because our identity then goes one more generation, two more generation, we won't recognize what it was to be a Hawaiian. They're already taking our lands. Why is it today that many of our people are flying off from Hawaii, moving to Las Vegas, moving to Oregon, moving to California? It's way cheaper there. Yeah. Well, how come it's cheaper there? It's not a naturalness of being cheaper there. It's because we're allowing these foreigners to come into Hawaii, buy up our lands, making the market become higher and higher and higher, and we got no way of stopping them from coming in and bringing in money and investing. We have no control over our borders. We do not control immigration into Hawaii. Who controls immigration into Hawaii? America. Yeah. It's crazy. It shouldn't be. And as a result, they can come in, they buy up our lands, take up all of our lands, and then we end up having to move out of places because we cannot afford it. But all we look at is just at that very surface. What is the reason? What is creating? this inability to afford. It's a control at the top. And unless we have politicians who say, enough already, let's start taking a look at what is happening. And let's start dreaming about this idea of independence. When you talk about independence, then you say, oh, what, you communists? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, what, you, you disloyal to the American government? And all that kind of stuff. So they start bringing out all of these things as if you're not supposed to even ask the questions. And if you don't ask the questions, who's going to ask the question? Nobody. Yeah. Because the politicians aren't asking the questions. Once they ask the question, they think that the people are going to turn against them and not vote for them again. They don't want to even address the issue. That's not leadership. Leadership is people who are willing to take and explore the areas that other people don't want to go into. Not just to meet the majority needs and always satisfy just the majority. Then you have no change. And that's what Hawaii needs. It needs that kind of grand thinking to think about the future. And it's going to have to come from you guys. I have a paper that I wrote. And I ask that you go to my, if you can see it on the board, I know it's not very dark. It's called Hawaiian Perspectives. Dot org. Okay, that's my website, and then I have documents on that website, and one of the areas that I have the documents on talks about the future of Hawaii, and in that category of the future of Hawaii, it's the 2035 edition of the Traveler's Guide to Hawaii, okay? So you can find it in this website and then go to documents. And there's many, many different types of documents. But check out the 2035 edition of the Traveler's Guide to Hawaii. And it's at least one vision of what Hawaii can become as an independent nation where we can govern our own the type of people that would be of Hawaii would be who? All of us, all us locals. What about the Hawaiians? They can be allowed to stay in Hawaii? Yeah, because we got a lot of Hawaiians who are locals just as much as we are. If your loyalty is to the United States, then you're not a citizen of Hawaii. 
We might let you stay here, but you cannot vote. You know, today what happens, for those of us who say that we are Hawaiian nationals, we're not U.S. citizens because we never went along with the theft. We never said that we were U.S. citizens. You know what they do to us? We cannot get legitimate jobs. Because when you apply for employment, they always ask, are you a U.S. citizen? If not, do you have a green card? We don't have green cards. We're not U.S. citizens. And as a result, we don't qualify for employment. To get a driver's license. Now on, they will start asking, are you a U.S. citizen? Or do you have a green card? Hawaii nationals not going to be able to legitimately drive. To vote, you have to be a U.S. citizen. So they ice us out of the vote. I used to serve as a trustee with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I used to vote in the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. But after they found that my loyalty was not to the United States, that I did not consider myself a U.S. citizen, we cannot vote. Even in the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, you see how crazy it is? But the thing is, we don't think about these things, and that's what we need to do. What other ways of discriminating against us do they do? You know, if you were to be charged with a criminal offense, you go up before the court, and the court will ask you, how do you plead, guilty or not guilty? And then they say, before you plead, normally if it's a misdemeanor or higher, they tell you, you have a right to a jury trial. A jury of your peers. What does that mean, a jury of your peers? It means same kind of people like us. We, they will serve on the jury. So you figure, oh yeah, a jury of my peers, good. I wanted to go to trial, have a jury trial. I expect a jury of my peers. But you know how they select juries? First of all, you gotta be a US citizen. So all of us who are Hawaiian nationals, none of us can get on the jury. See how they continually <coughs> discriminate against the Hawaiian nationals. Here in Hawaii, our own people, and people are not paying attention to it. Any questions so far? So a lot of problems. What can be done about it? What are the other problems in Hawaii? There's a lot. A lot. The uh, windmills in Kahuku. Just, okay. just land conservation. Yeah. Land controversies. One of the major issues that have been facing a lot of the native Hawaiians, not only native Hawaiians, many others. Native Hawaiians, ooh, dietary. Yeah, they help. Problems, yeah. They face a lot of like heart problems because why not is just lined up with like fast food joints and mm -hmm. targeted fast food areas. But part of, part of the problem is that you have some of the people say that they want independence. You know? And we want to control our own destiny. We want to control our language. We want to control our health services, all that stuff. Another group of people are saying, Oh, I want to remain part of the United States. So on one side you have independence, the other side you have incorporation into the United States. Federal recognition. That debate has separated the Hawaiian nation. They fight, fight, fight with one another. <laughs> they cannot get together. <laughs> because the question that has been put is, do you favor independence or do you favor federal recognition, the Kaka Bill, integration? Okay. 
And so some people say I favor independence, other people say I favor federal recognition, and as a result, people get very angry with one another, on one side or to the other side, even within families, within churches, within organizations, within schools, classrooms, they're fighting with one another over that question. Are you folks familiar with that battle that's been going on? Independence or um, the federal recognition? Yeah, some people want federal recognition. Another group want independence. Yeah. Listen to the question. Do you support independence or do you support federal recognition? Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln said, a nation divided against itself cannot stand. Common sense, right? Yeah. So just because he was out there, does that mean that we shouldn't listen to common sense? A nation divided against itself cannot stand. Jonah Kuhio said, stop acting like the Alamihi crab. When one tried to get out of the bucket, the rest of us pull that one down. We got to pull together. Listen to the question. Should we be an independent nation or should we be integrated into the United States? What is dividing us? The government. Well, not only that, just us, in, um, just us in general. Because the people that want to be um, federally recognized is the people that believe that we can't survive without America. But um, those that believe that we should be independent are those that know that um, the only reason why they're here is because we're still resourceful in what they need. Okay. The question that divides us is a question. It's the use of the term or. Because many people who support federal recognition, let's say people on the homesteads, they said, hey, I don't want to lose my home. If they're collecting uh, grants from the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, I don't want to lose the grants. I don't want the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to get wiped out. Or if their children go to Kamehameha schools, I don't want Kamehameha schools to be wiped out. But they also support independence. But it's a crazy word called or that we allow to slice us and to divide us. And because we don't use enough analysis, we just let it happen. Suppose we change a question to the word and. You can support federal recognition and you can support independence. Why divide ourselves? Why fight with one another? Why divide the nation? And that is the new mindset that we need to start thinking about. In the past, the people who have been active in the Hawaiian sovereignty movements have not been seen it that way. They say, well, you folks traitors, you want to remain with the United States. And so you divide the country. The new leadership has to start thinking of new ways of imagining, of, of posing a question. And I suggest that one way is changing the question. We cannot be dealing with the or. We have to be in, inclusive. It has to be and. You want independence? Fine. I support you. But in the meantime, I need my job. Or I got to go to school. Or I got to do this. Or I got to do that. So. I will do this, and yet I support the independence movement. From the independent side, we should be saying, go ahead, get into the education system, become professors, become teachers, change the education system, enter into the business field, change the business field. The overthrow is not necessarily by wiping out the system as we have now, but to take over the system to claim the system, to mold it into 
what we believe it should be. Only by supporting one another are we going to unite the nation. Otherwise, we're forever fighting with one another. And stupid stuff doesn't make sense. It's not practical. Any questions? No. This is an entity, an organization. It's not really an organization. I formed it. It's called the Hawaii National Transitional Authority. And what we are saying is that we need to pull the nation together. We need to engage in a transition in Hawaii. Some people say we want immediate independence. And I said, we're well, not ready for it. We do not have it now. We don't have the number of people that we need. But we can begin the transition. We can support one another. We can talk about what Hawaii will become when we take over. And so it's not necessarily through revolution that we will become independent. We can also do it by evolution. Get into the system. Take over the system from the inside. So this is what the Hawaii National Transitional Authority is trying to accomplish. Okay? And we're trying to accomplish it in two major ways. You go to the website, you'll come across a document when you go to the United Nations or the international area. We have submitted, when I say we, three of us associated with this entity. It's Leon Seal, who has been the most active person in the international arena now. Myself, who had been active in the international arena. And Keone Dudley, who wrote the book Hawaiian Sovereignty. And based on that book, Peter Apo came out with a music record, the Hawaiian Sovereignty. What we did was we followed the history of Hawaii and how we were taken over and how the United Nations then said, okay, all places that is considered non-self-governing or that other people would call colonies, all places must be given the right to self-determination. Okay, all of these colonies. So, this is 1945. 1946, the General Assembly of the United Nations says, we want different countries to come in and submit those places that should be decolonized. So the United States comes to the United Nations and says, okay, we have some places. Alaska should be decolonized. Puerto Rico, decolonized. The Virgin Islands, decolonized. American Samoa, decolonized. Hawaii, decolonized. Guam, decolonized. The requirement is that all of these people are trained for self-determination. And then they should be given a question. Three options. Do you want to remain part of the United States? Do you want to be in, uh, in a commonwealth relationship with the United States? Or do you want to be independent? from the United States, okay? So that was in 1946. The United States have not done anything in Hawaii until 1959. 1959, they know that the United Nations is gonna start taking a closer look at the colonies. So what does the United States do? They say, oh, we'll give you the opportunity to become a state. So they say that people can vote on becoming a state. So what is the question that they put on the ballot? Did you want to become a state now or later? Shall Hawaii be immediately admitted into the Union as a state? What were the three options they're supposed to give us? Independence, free association, or integration? 
There's no such thing as independence in that question, right? No. <laughs> or free association. Only one option, either be a state or remain a territory. This is the second way that they cheated. The second way they cheated, you remember I was talking about self-determination? Who is the self? Them. <laughs> it's supposed to be the people who were denied the right to self-determination. That is the appropriate self. But in this case, what did they, did they say? Who could vote? Who could participate? U.S. citizens and only U.S. citizens. But what about people such as us who say we are Hawaiian nationals? They don't count. We cannot vote. So when they held their vote, it wasn't self-determination. The United States altered the self and limited the vote. They cheated. So we wrote all of this up and we sent it to the United Nations. And so at the United Nations, countries are taking a look at this history. And we are asking the General Assembly of the United Nations to take a second look at what happened in Hawaii in 1959 and ask whether or not we should be given the right to self-determination again, to vote again. And this time, it's us who vote, not the Americans. So that's one effort that we have now going at the United Nations. Okay. Now in Hawaii, what is happening domestically? As I said before, they're discriminating against our Hawaiian nationals. We cannot get a job in Hawaii. We cannot get driver's license. We cannot travel. There's so much discrimination. We cannot even open a bank account because we don't have social security numbers. And every time we refuse to pay taxes to the American government, they come in after us and they try to throw us in jail. So there's discrimination happening in Hawaii. But people don't pay attention to us because we cannot vote. So the organization, this transitional authority, is trying to address both the international arena and the local arena, the domestic arena. So we have resolutions in the state legislature to say, hey, pass this resolution, no further discrimination in Hawaii against Hawaiian nationals. For those Hawaiian nationals who want to participate, you have to open the door and allow the society to include all of us. Okay. So that's a program that we're trying to develop, to bring the nation together under one. Now you still have groups who are saying, oh, I'm the Hawaiian king. Or I'm the governor, or I'm the Pu'u Honua, or I'm the regent pro tem, and it's my organization this, my organization that. That's okay. You can still hang on to your idea of who you are. That doesn't mean that you need to be separated from the rest of everybody. We all need to join in and push. If you think that, no, we should be going after federal recognition at the present time, that's okay. We all need to jump in and push together rather than continually fighting with one another. And as we join in, what happens is we start talking with one another, we start sharing our dreams of what the future should be. And what's going to happen is that we start educating one another. So people become more liberal. They start listening to one another. Only in that way are we going to create a new, healthy Hawaii for the future. If we keep separating ourselves from one another, we allow this idea of hate, of domination, and all this other stuff take over. Now what good is Hawaiian independence? We're screwing up anyway. So we have to change that whole model that we're working on. How do you change model? What is this really all about, this change of model? Have you folks heard the term deep culture? Deep culture. Well, it's the first 
deep culture. There's such a thing as deep culture, but the thing is it's so deep that people don't even know it exists. They don't ask themselves whether or not or what really exists. What makes things operate here in Hawaii today? What is the culture of the place that makes things operate here in Hawaii today? That moves the economic system, that moves the education system, that moves the political system, the environmental system. What are the basic beliefs? That is a deep culture. And what is that culture? There's a dominating culture and a subsidiary culture. The dominating culture is based on three fundamental principles. Principle number one, D, domination. If you can dominate, you rule, you can take over, you govern. Domination. Okay. Principle number two, individualism. We always elevate the individual. Just think of yourself. Promote yourself. Individualism. Principle number three, exclusion. If they're not with you, they're against you. If you're in a war, you exclude the very enemy from humanity. During the Vietnam War, what did we call the uh, Viet Congs? Uh, Zipperheads. What? Zipperheads. Zipper what was the term? Zipperheads. Zipperheads. Zipper I never heard that term. <laughs> because they used to run, up, run them over with the tanks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I heard them called gooks. And that too. <laughs> Bodies. And all kind of other names. Yeah. But what, what happens is that they start calling people by other names that dehumanizes them. These are fathers and mothers. They take them out of the human condition. And that's how we deal with this whole idea. That is a deep culture that we get involved in. Domination, individualism, exclusion. You can turn it into D-I-E. That's what we're doing to our society. We're separating from one another, we're killing one another, we're killing our environment, we're killing our aloha for one another. That's where we're going. So what alternative do we have? What alternative do we have? There's another deep culture that exists in Hawaii. You find a lot of it in Y and I, in the communities, in the local communities. When you go on the hook, you have to find out in these communities. That's why leadership is so important. Not that you're not going to find it in a classroom. You're going to find it outside. And instead of domination, you know, in Hawaiian you have the word olu olu. Kind of be gentle with one another. You can still disagree. You don't have to get into a fight. You can still respect one another. We have different opinions. My mother, she was a weird bird. <laughs> and when we had different people from different religions would come over to proselytize, Seventh-day Adventists, the Mormons, the all, all these different religions would come. And they would say, can I speak with you? Can we talk about religion, etc., etc.? What would she do? She didn't say, no, I'm sorry, I'm Chinese, get out of here. <laughs> no, she would say, come inside. You want some tea? You want some coffee? Or if all she had was water to offer, have a cup of water and sit down and accommodate. It doesn't mean that you necessarily agree with the others, but you have this olu olu attitude. And it's a common attitude that we have. This is what it is to be local, to, to have that olu olu feeling. This is part of aloha. And we all know it, it's innate within us who grew up in this area. Okay, so rather than domination, 
What we practice in our community is olu olu. Exclusion or individualism, the I. Here, we always think about the group. What is the Hawaiian word for it? Lokahi. Yeah? yeah? Think of the group. So we help one another. When I was at Waina High School, I used to hate to study. Okay? And we, the Hawaiians, would always sit in the back of the class so that we don't get called alone <laughs> in the front. So we try to find anonymity by sitting in the back. One day I'm sitting in the back. Ho'ipo is sitting next to me. And we're waiting for the class to begin. The teacher walks in and the teacher says, okay class, we have a quiz today. And she begins from the corner and she writes the five questions out. She says, you folks separate, I don't want any talking, no cheating. I'll be back when I think you folks should be done. Okay. So I'm sitting there and I said, oh no, I hate this. <laughs> I never study, right? <laughs> so people are doing the test. I'm over there. I'm stuck on question number three. So I said, oh, Ipo, what the answer for question number three? <laughs> and Ho Ipo says, Oh, the answer for question number three is, and she loud, she talked loud. I said, she didn't talk loud. <laughs> the teacher walks in. The teacher hears Ho'ipo talking to me. Ho'ipo, what are you doing? Oh, I'm telling him the answer to number three. <laughs> she, the teacher says, you folks are cheating. She said, no, we're not cheating. I'm helping him because he's wrong. This sounds like something we do. This sounds like something we do now. Yeah. That's a major, major difference. The education system that comes from the Western side is individualized. You help yourself, no cheat. It's somehow a violation of your moral code because you can help somebody else out. But from our moral code, from our culture, we got to help. You see somebody needs help, you help without question. So instead of individualism, it's lokahi. That's part of the deep culture of Hawaii. For us locals, okay? The other part is exclusion. If you're not with us, you're against us. What is the opposite? How do we handle it in the Hawaiian culture? When somebody new comes into class, we don't know them. They may come from Japan or California or Russia or something like that. What do we do? We introduce ourselves. We try to get to know them. Yeah. Make them feel comfortable. You're expressing aloha. You're incorporating them. Normally, you don't talk to them, <laughs> you try to avoid the, the stranger. Exclusion. And it takes a while before you begin to include. In Hawaii, you try to embrace. It's aloha. So you substitute aloha instead of exclusion. So what do you have in the deep culture that is a local culture that we need to substitute for the deep culture of D-I-E? You have olu olu. You have lokahi, and you have aloha. What does that spell? O, L, A. Ola. What does ola mean? Like hi. <laughs> what else? I have my Samoan friend straight from Western Samoa. Ola. What does it mean? Means, uh, life. life or health. Yeah. yeah? Or the Maoris will say, Kia ora, to your health. Ora. Ola, ola. Ola is health. Ola is to make healthy, to be alive, not die. 
We need to start taking over our deep culture. We need to start reformulating how politics is made, how economics are held, how we deal with the environment. If we keep with the mentality of die, even if we become an independent nation, we still kill ourselves, we kill our resources. But if we switch that deep culture into an older deep culture, then we we'll all become healthy. We we'll all learn to share, to care for one another. If that doesn't happen, we did. Okay. So that's the end of my lecture. <laughs> Any questions that you folks want to ask? Yes. Um, why do you have like Oka Lainui? And Hayden Burgess in your name? I am licensed as an attorney as Hayden Burgess. When I was born, that's what my father gave me. Then I started studying with a woman, Pilai Paki. And her specialty is language and, and history. And so when I told her, I cannot go f all that far back because some Polynesians, they can go all the way back to the very beginning, right? So I said, I can only go back to my great, great, great grandmother. And her name was Poka. And so, Auntie Pilahi choked. And she says, that's your name. I said, no, you don't understand. That's my great, great. She said, no, you don't understand. <laughs> in the Hawaiian style, in terms of naming, and in terms of possessing name, she says, that is your name, Poka. Then I explained that she was married to Lai Nui, and over a period of time, the law changed, so she took a last name, and that last name was her husband's name. And so the same thing happened when, she, when I mentioned Lai Nui. And so I said, Auntie, how do you know? <laughs> she looked at me, and she smiled, and she said, I speak with the gods, and that is your name. You see, in the process of colonization, we forget these ancestral kinds of stuff. We don't even look. <coughs> we just accept these new things and we take up names that really have no significance. So Hayden Burgess has really no ancestral or cultural significance. Poka Lainui has cultural significance. Poka is that blast sound. Okay? It brings in life, and it is through my voice that I'm supposed to be able to inspire, bring in new life. So anyway, it's a reflection of that kind of history. Okay, any questions? Yes? Okay, so talking about decolonization, right? Do you think Hawaii, Hawaii like, like, does it still have a chance to be an independent nation, or like, are we still forever stuck with the U.S.? I say we are not. The, uh, the, the UCJ, this court, this tribunal of the United Nations, recently decided just a few months ago, there's another place called Mauritius. They were given the independence, but the British kept some of the islands away from them in 1965. So they've been squawking, squawking, squawking about it. They say our decolonization has not been complete. You folks stole these islands and you made military bases, then you gave it to the United States. You won't give it back to us. So the British were saying, ah, too late, too bad. So the people of Mauritius went to the United Nations General Assembly and they asked the General Assembly, Take a look at this issue. Did the General Assembly fulfill its requirement of self-determination, of decolonization? So the, the court then said, okay, we'll take a look at the case. And recently they said, no, decolonization has not been complete. Britain and the United States, you have to give back these islands to Mauritius. Although this was, what, two generations ago, the courts have said, 
we taking a look and we making a decision. Britain and France says, no, you cannot decide because it affects our sovereignty. We refuse to be participants. The court said, you don't need to be participants. We are advising the General Assembly that they have not fulfilled their obligation. So you see how they went around the U.S. and around Britain. Another example, Tahiti. The French took Tahiti off the places to be decolonized, said you are now French. The Tahitians have, have been saying, you cheated. How come you can vote on this question in Paris? How come you folks can participate in stealing us from all of France? The same thing with New Caledonia. They call it Kanaki now. So New Caledonia and Tahiti went back to the United Nations and said they cheated. We should be back on the list of places to be decolonized. The issue is not dead. The United Nations says, you're right. You have the right to address this issue again. Okay. Hawaii in the same place. They cheated. Some people say, but there's nothing you can do with the United States so big that they rule the United Nations. Not necessarily so. Since the United Nations was formed, you had at that time 50 nations. Today you have about 190 nations of the General Assembly. Where did these other nations come from? They were all decolonized after the United Nations formed. And they all understand decolonization. In the Pacific, you have all these Pacific nations now independent. And they have joined in to bring about decolonization. In Africa, all of Africa, previously was controlled by the British, by the French, by the Germans. They're all decolonized. So you have a change at the United Nations. New countries coming about. So there's a lot of hope. Okay, the last thing. Any of you interested in participating in the international arena? What is that? to go to the United Nations, to find out what's going on, to be an advocate for Hawaiian independence. You want to get your feet wet. You want to find out more about it. You know that organization I was telling you about? Yeah. We are looking for people to send to our company, Leon. I've, I've spent years there, but we need younger people to go start learning and carrying on the cause. We're getting kind of makule. <laughs> so we need young folks. If you folks really want to take a chance, this, it's not a rich life. There's a lot of suffering going on, sacrifice going on. So there's a lot of work there, even in the local arena, to advocate for changes in the legislature, to run for office. We need to become participants. Don't just stand on the sideline and watch everybody control our lives.